mentally, do you do you enjoy being in the lead? Do you feel pressure there? What do you do when you when someone sort of tries to come by you? What's your mm-hmm. what's your mental plan there? Yeah, that's the thing about being a, a swimmer. Hey, is that um, you know you're the hunty a lot, and you're not you're often not the hunter. In St. George, it was great because instantly I became the you know the hunter. I was I was chasing Svenja all day, but. What what I try to answer that when I, when they come past me on the bike, I am like a squirrel trying to get a nut. I will try to stay with them and take that risk as like as much as I can. Svenja, Annabelle, and I we looked at each other. I remember, and we were like, "No way, we can hang on to that." I mean, she was amazing. Like there was she was of this level up here, and we were here. There's just there was no matching that that day. Um, so that's when you're like, you hope, not that you hope she blows up in the run, but you're like, all right, if she can pull this off at that pace, kudos. Like, I, I released that. That's amazing. Um, but you have to make the decision in the moment. Like, I, can, I couldn't even try to hang with her. I think we lasted maybe five miles, and then it was like, I'm, I'm not even going to be able to run at this pace. So I got to go. It's in my comfort zone plus. Um, and then, because I had a five-minute deficit going into the run, and, um, you know, I think my, I, I do think, and I've talked about this, I, I'm hopeful my experience in 70.3 did help. And I talked to Svenja, and she said she she went for it on the bike, and it, it often doesn't, you know, always work out when on the run. And she's an ITU girl. She's used to shorter distances. Mark my words, watch out for her when she starts getting used to the 70.3, because she'll, she'll find that rhythm in the ride, and and not, um, you know, blow her biscuits in the, in the run then. And did you, when you started that run, did you feel like you had a shot? I mean, did you, were you trying to reel her in from the get-go or were you just trying to run your own race? Uh, well, no, I was, uh, I mean, we're all trying to be in our, in the moment and in our own race, but when you're down and keep in mind, I had about 10 gazelles behind me. <laughs> so that was actually my main, like Svenja was out there and I knew she was there and I was looking forward to the turnaround where I could kind of take inventory. Well, where is she? Am I gaining? Could this be potential? I'm going to, I'm going to go for it. Like I was running as fast as I could, even if I blew up at mile nine, you had to take that risk at a U.S. championship. Um, then you have all those girls running behind me. I was, I was honestly more worried about them than catching Svenja. Um, and, and I think having that pressure from those girls helped me to do that, to catch her by like mile 11 or wherever it was. Cool. Well, I think everybody's always super impressed with how far you push the race down the road. You know, it's, it's really, it's well, fun to watch, you. you know. Thank you. The key though is you have to look at pressure as this like responsibility, right? The worst would be to, you know, is the worst feeling is, and trust me, I've been there many a times, is to blow up. Like, and you hit that point where you're, you're like, I might blow up. And then it happens. And so now I've been working the past year to try to to not do that. But there's some moments where you got to take the risk. And if you do, you do. It's just part of our job.